WWE SummerSlam is the hottest wrestling pay-per-view event of the summer, where championships were crowned, retained, and lost, and new rivalries and storylines were made. It's the number two biggest show of the year next to WrestleMania. Today, I'm making my top 7 best SummerSlam matches in WWE history. Number 7. Shawn Michaels vs. Triple H, SummerSlam 2002. Ever since the ruthless aggression era has begun when Rock and Austin leaving, Mr. McMahon tries so hard to save his company and the early matches and moments defined the ruthless aggression era. And today I'm sick because I didn't have enough air to sleep at night or in the morning. I suck cough drops and drink coffee to try to feel better again. But on this case, Shawn Michaels and Triple H were best friends since the Kilk. They were closer to brothers even from 1997 to 1998 where they were the part of D-Generation X. Shawn Michaels would retire after he lost the WWE Championship to Stone Cold Steve Austin in his last in-ring match at WrestleMania 14 because he has back issues, he suffered a back injury in the 1998 Royal Rumble event against The Undertaker in a casket match. Shawn Michaels made his return in 2002 and reunites with his best friend, The Game, Triple H and reforms D-Generation X. But it turns out to be a swerve when Triple H pedigrees Shawn Michaels out of nowhere and left him laying in the ring. Then, Shawn reveals Triple H being his attacker at the parking lot to challenge Helmsley to a match at SummerSlam, which turns to be an unsanctioned match. In their match at SummerSlam 2002, Triple H mostly destroying Michaels, sidewalk backbreakers, steel chairs, DDT on the chair, Helmsley punishing HBK, and however HBK fought back, splashed through the table outside the ring, Sean drops the elbow off the ladder, Helmsley blocks the sweet chin music into the pedigree, but countered into a jackknife cover, and Shawn Michaels wins the match. Besides, Triple H destroys Shawn Michaels with a sledgehammer and a post-match assault. Jim Ross calls the post-match assault. Triple H I hope you go to rotten hell, because you have no heart and you have no soul, you son of a bitch, you realized what you have just done. Number 6. Bret Hitman Hart vs. Mr. Perfect, SummerSlam 1991. If you take a look back at the golden era, you know it's a golden time for you to be a wrestling fan. Especially this match, this is where Bret Hart reaches his prime. After the Hart Foundation lost the WWF Tag Team titles at WrestleMania 7, Bret Hart is on a single run. He had a match against Mr. Perfect two years before their match at SummerSlam. People say their match at King of the Ring 1993 was a better match than their match here. For me, not so much but it was for me, 1993 WWF Match of the Year candidate. I think their match at SummerSlam was better than their match at King of the Ring. This was Mr. Perfect's best in ring match, so as the hitman, and it has to be one of the most memorable matches in SummerSlam history, with Bret winning the Intercontinental title for the first time. And I seen the latest YouTube post. Mr. Perfect should be the World Wrestling Federation champion before he died, and it would have been the perfect moment. And speaking of Bret Hart. <clears throat> Number 5. Bret Hitman Hart vs. The Undertaker, SummerSlam 1997. This match changed direction to preview the Attitude Era, Bret Hart was a heel at that time, trashing America, forming the faction of the Hart Foundation, having issues with Shawn Michaels, and Shawn Michaels was the special guest referee at that time, and if he favors The Undertaker to retain the WWF Championship against Bret, he and Bret Hart would never wrestle in the United States ever again. It was a phenomenal matchup between Hart and The Undertaker. And in the end, Bret Hart pulled out the smartest way to win his fifth and final WWE Championship and then SummerSlam 1997 by spinning Shawn Michaels in the face to cause him to accidentally hit The Undertaker with a chair. This previews the Attitude Era, and Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker would meet at In Your House PLE Ground Zero in Bad Blood Inside Hell in a Cell with the debut of Kane and Bret would defend the WWE Championship against Shawn Michaels with the Montreal Screw Job, because Bret refuses to drop the championship to HBK, because he wanted to take the championship to WCW. Number 4. Edge and Christian vs. The Hardy Boys vs. The Dudley Boys, SummerSlam 2000. 2000 was WWE's biggest year in the middle of the Attitude Era to start the 2000s decade, The Rock and Triple H were two biggest stars of the company, Kurt Angle having the greatest rookie year of his life, new and young talent were made, The Undertaker's American Badass gimmick, Eddie Guerrero in China, ENC, and The Hardys, 
and the Dudleys carried the tag team division, the A, P, A, uh, Hell in a Cell, etc. At SummerSlam 2000, we witness a first ever tables, ladders and chairs match for the WWE Tag Team Championships between Edge and Christian, the Dudley Boys, and the Hardys. This match is the reason people say 2000 is the greatest year in WWE history, for me, not so much because of bit of shenanigans and negatives including a bad WrestleMania and Rikishi's shitty heel turn. But it's still an awesome year for the WWE. This match, Edge gives the Dudley Boys chair shots, the Hardys jumping off of ladders, Jeff missed the Swanton off the ladder and through a table, Bubba Ray goes off the ladder through a stack of tables, Matt also falls off the ladder through tables, this is one of the best I've ever seen. These three teams carried the division in a violent way, and Edge and Christian retains the tag team titles, and speaking of TLC. Number 3. CM Punk vs Jeff Hardy, SummerSlam 2009. 2009 was a bad and weird year for the WWE and all good things must come to an end. But this rivalry on SmackDown in 2009 was underappreciated between CM Punk and Jeff Hardy. They carried SmackDown over the World Heavyweight Championship and CM Punk was a heel at that time, his straight edge gimmick fit him well, and he always speaks the truth to give people advice to just say no. Jeff Hardy on the other hand, older views loves Jeff Hardy during the Attitude Era and younger views also loves Jeff Hardy because he's extreme, he's a daredevil, he always taking a risk, he wins championships and retained, he does his weird ass dance. This man you people loved always changed your heart. He revolutionized ladder matches, extreme rules, and street fights. This match at SummerSlam 2009 has all the credit it gets. I don't care about DX reuniting, I don't care about Senna vs Orton, I don't care about Raw, screw that. Sucky draw, this match and the rivalry right here is all I cared about. Jeff Hardy and CM Punk Rex Havoc and tear the house down over the world heavyweight title with tables, ladders, and chairs. This was Jeff Hardy's WWE pay-per-view and his last in-ring pay-per-view match until WrestleMania 33, 8 years later. The biggest highlight of the night is when Jeff Hardy jumps off the 20 feet high ladder with a swanton bomb onto CM Punk through the announce table. At the end of the bout, CM Punk knocks Jeff Hardy out off of the ladder and down to the canvas to win his third World Heavyweight Championship to put an end of Jeff Hardy and the rivalry, and lights out, The Undertaker returns. Number 2. The Undertaker vs Edge, SummerSlam 2008. 2008 was a much better year than 2009 and this match has all the storytelling between Edge and The Undertaker from a money in the bank cash in on Smackdown to a relationship with Edge and Vicky Guerrero to WrestleMania to TLC to Edge cheating on Vicky on their wedding night. Edge is going insane on the road to SummerSlam to his match against The Undertaker inside Hell in a Cell. But this was when WWE turned PG at that time, which is good for younger views but pissed older views off. At least this match was way too violent from inside the ring to outside, inside the cell, outside the cell, this match turned into TLC, Steel Steps, paying nostalgia from Survivor Series 2007, and Undertaker wins the Hell in a Cell match and after the match, the Undertaker looking to beat Edge's ass even more, he choke slams Edge off of two ladder and through the ring canvas, sending him straight to hell. The rated R superstar mostly carried 2008 than Jeff Hardy and Chris Jericho, especially he was the world heavyweight champion or not. Especially this match, this has to be one of the best Hell in a Cell matches, back when Hell in a Cell means something, back when this match wasn't a pay-per-view, not just in SummerSlam history, but WWE and the PG era has ever produced. Before we get to number 1, here are honorable mentions. The Mega Powers vs. The Mega Bucks, SummerSlam 1988. John Cena vs. Randy Orton, SummerSlam 2007. The Hart Foundation vs. Demolition, SummerSlam 1990. Rey Mysterio vs. Eddie Guerrero, SummerSlam 2005. Brock Lesnar vs. The Rock, SummerSlam 2002. Randy Orton vs. Christian, SummerSlam 2011. Roman Reigns vs. Brock Lesnar, SummerSlam 2022.
Brock Lesnar vs. Sam Punk, SummerSlam 2013. Stone Cold Steve Austin vs. The Undertaker, SummerSlam 1998. Triple H vs. The Rock, SummerSlam 1998. Brock Lesnar vs. Roman Reigns vs. Samoa Joe vs. Braun Strowman, SummerSlam 2017. Seth Rollins vs. Brock Lesnar, SummerSlam 2019. AJ Styles vs. John Cena, SummerSlam 2016. Bret Hitman Hart vs. Owen Hart, SummerSlam 1994. Shawn Michaels vs. Razor Ramon, SummerSlam 1995. Number 1. The British Bulldog vs. Bret Hitman Hart, SummerSlam 1992. Let's go back to the 90s with the greatest main event in SummerSlam history. Live. In the Wembley Stadium in London, England, SummerSlam 1992. Now some of you people believe this match should be number one because of one man, and that's Davey Boy Smith, the British Bulldog. Trust me, this is without a doubt one of the greatest intercontinental championship matches not just in SummerSlam history but in WWE history. 1992 is my favorite wrestling year during the 90s, this match is free on YouTube now, the highlight of the bout is when Bret Hart's son set flips, but Bulldog counters a leverage pin and beats him to capture the Intercontinental Championship and the crowd was hot and electric. I didn't watch wrestling until 1998, but I was a fan of Bret Hart and the Bulldog in and out of the ring and past wrestlers like Davy Boy Smith deserved to be the WWE Champion before they passed away next to Owen Hart. This leads Bret Hart to get to the top from 92 to 93 to 94. Bret Hart would carry the WWE in middle of the 90s, even in the new generation era. Those are my top 7 best matches in SummerSlam history, with honorable mentions. In your opinion, what are your top 7 best SummerSlam matches with honorable mentions? What are your predictions for SummerSlam 2024? Leave the comment below and I'll see you in the next video.